So over the past few months, I've been creating some map animations for a YouTube travel vlogger named Ava Zubek. And more recently, we've been creating these 3D terrain style maps. So on today's episode of Monday Maps, I wanna break down kind of step by step what goes into making one of these terrain maps. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. So if you're subscribed to my YouTube channel, clearly you're a fan of map making and Adobe After Effects. Well, Skillshare is an online learning community that has content focusing on both of these areas. Jake Bartlett is the king of After Effects. One of my personal favorites is his course called Animating with Ease. He really does a deep dive on how to use the graph editor, how to properly perform overshoots, how to work with motion pass, how to loop animations. And when it comes to map making, there's a really cool course that I'm taking right now called Fantasy Maps, The Art of Exploring Imaginary Worlds. This is a course from Ira Marks. He shows you how to create landscapes, he talks about symbology, iconography, typography. Skillshare is ad-free, so you can stay focused on the content, and they're always adding new premium content to the site. And the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare, so you can start exploring your creativity today. So last month, Ava put out a video called Running 115 Miles Alone in the Accursed Mountains. And she essentially did this crazy run um, called the Peaks of the Balkans and it goes through like three or four countries, I think three countries. She had a Garmin watch on where she recorded her track, and so that's where I started with the animation. So she sent me this GPX file. So that was my first step. I have After Effects open here, and I have GeoLayers 3 open, and right down here, before I even create a map comp, you can just click on Add Features to Browser. I'm gonna go to Import File, and then right here I have this GPX file that she sent me. Now when I open this up, I see a bunch of waypoints as well as this track here. And you can see it kind of gives me a preview up on the map here. So if I double click it, it's gonna take me right here, shows me her route. And now I'm gonna go ahead and create a map comp and I'm gonna call it Peaks, whoops, Peaks of the Balkans. And I have it set to 4K, that's perfectly fine, but I'm gonna set that to a duration of 15 seconds. And for the imagery, I'm just gonna pick uh, Bing Aerial. For some reason, it's not loading here, the preview. So I'll just choose that Bing Aerial satellite. And that's gonna set up my map comp here. And right away, I just wanna turn off, I'm gonna click on the settings, I'm gonna turn off the labels, I don't want those. And I'm gonna hold control just so I can quickly finalize um, one frame so you can see what we're looking at here. Okay, so this is just top-down looking straight down at this particular area um, Where she ran so one of the first things I want to do is I want to set up um, the 3d landscape so this requires um, One of three plugins that you can use so well first Let me just show you how to do it right here. It says create 3d landscape So if I click on this so you can see it's one of three plugins here you can use metal freeform pro a Plexus 3 or trap code mirror 3. I have metal freeform pro. I'm just going to set my duration to 15 seconds And we'll set this frame rate to 24. I'll click on metal freeform pro now this sets up a um, Basically a 3d landscape project now if you're familiar with geo layers, and you know how to navigate around geo layers This is kind of a completely different workflow So it's going to set up your master 3d landscape comp and it sets up a controller comp as well as a texture map comp so if you look here, if I click on Texture Freeform Pro and I go to Effect Controls, this is where the uh, Metal Freeform Pro extension is being applied. And that's essentially like a, like a height map or a displacement map that is, is um, affecting that. So if I open up the Texture Comp, um, I can see just a texture here. I'm going to go ahead and finalize this. And for some reason, when you set up this 3D comp it takes you to a specific area on the map every time so I actually have to navigate back because this is not what I want here but you can see this is the texture map so now anytime I draw shape elements or features and I want them to be I want them to apply to that texture I want them to move with the mountains um, I need to apply those or draw those inside of this texture map comp so you'll see now if I want to navigate around this particular comp there's three different settings here. I have camera pitch, camera bearing, camera elevation, and it's telling me which parameter I need to adjust here. So rotation X. So if I just hit R for rotation, you can see that it's set to 42 right now, and that's the pitch. So I can change it. Let's set that to like 50, and you're gonna see that's gonna pitch that. So if I move this around. Now, it's not looking great right now, but that's because it defaults set up to quarter resolution. So here it is at full resolution. Now we can see we've got a very nice looking map. But I'll set that back down to quarter resolution just so I can, you know, play around with it and it'll be smooth. 
So I can change the bearing with the Z rotation here. So if you go down, you can see I can spin it around. And then I can change the elevation as well. So what I want to do now, well, first I want to navigate back to where this route location is. So I'm just going to double click on this and that'll use my controller comp and drag it right back there. And I'm going to zoom it out just by one little click here. And now I'm going to control finalize to um, finalize the texture and the height map here. And now we'll see how this looks. Okay, very cool. It's looking pretty good. All right, now I actually want to animate Ava's path here. So what I'm going to do is I need to select like a layer style for this. So I don't want to use any of these layer styles. I'm going to create a new layer style. I'll call this path. And I'm going to set the color to some kind of red. I know the code here. And I'll go ahead and duplicate this one. And then I'll create a stroke one as well. So we have the stroke and the fill. And I'm going to set the stroke to, let's do like 7 pixel width. OK, so now with the path layer style here, I'm going to select the route, and then I'm going to go click the draw feature. So I'm going to go ahead and animate this feature path, and it's it's asking me how long should the animation take. 12 seconds is good because it's a 15 second comp. So I'm going to go ahead and create the animation. And now if you look here in my 3D landscape comp, nothing happened. Well, that's because it drew it in my texture comp. And if you click here, there's a little heart that says draw on preferred map comp. And if I go here to my map comps and I unlock them, it's going to show you this little heart here that says prefer for drawing features. So that's how this was set up. So when I draw features, it's going to draw them directly in this, um, this texture map comp. So now if I go into the texture map comp, you can see here um, that this path is drawn here. If I hit the U key, now you can see that there's a bunch of keyframes and that is this route now animating on. But what's interesting about this is it's using the actual uh, routes you know, I think she did this, was it over the course of five days? So she has the different time slots here, but I want this to animate on in one nice fluid movement. So for that, I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna delete all the keyframes except for the um, beginning and end. There might be a way to draw the feature like that, but I do not know, probably. So I'll just delete all these. And now I've just got these two keyframes. I'll grab these and I'll add a little bit of an ease curve to it. And now, now we can see this is kind of smoothly drawing on. I have my preview settings set to skip some keyframes so it will play back quickly. Okay, so now I've got this. And if you go back to the 3D landscape, you can see now I've got the this um, path and it's following the texture, which is very cool. Once again, quarter resolution. Don't worry, it's going to look better than that. So I'm going to go ahead and add like a, a glow to this. And I'll turn the glow way down. OK, so now we got this glow. That's looking pretty cool. All right, now I want to have, I want to change the bearing. I want to have like a bearing animation. I want it to rotate as, um, as this animates on. So I'm going to go grab rotation Z, and I'll add a keyframe here and let's say I want that that's this is a position I want it to end at um, and I want it to begin somewhere over here let's see how this looks I add some ease to this okay there we go that's looking pretty cool now one of the really really cool thing that you can do here is I can pull um, I can create a little elevation diagram. So with this route selected, if you go down here, it says draw property charts. Uh, once again, I'm not sure if this is available in the standard version of GeoLayers 3 or if you need the Map Tyler account to um, have access to this. You know, w one way you can find out and check is if you look in the product description on anyscripts.com, you'll be able to see at the bottom. I think it's at the bottom of the page. In the map tyler section it tells you so if i click on this it brings up it basically creates a new diagram here and it draws these shape layers here the chart and the borders here and i can go in and specify um what i want to show here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go down to the data here and for y-axis i'm just going to switch that to elevation and now watch what happens here you can see we get some elevation information i'll go ahead and change this to the color of the path as well. And I can tweak it more. I can give it a buffer, offset it a little bit. But I'm going to leave it as is there. 
So now that's drawn on here, I can go in and now I can resize this, bring it down, 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 make it real small. And the only problem is, is it's not, um, well, first of all, it doesn't really look like it's matching that color very well. Also, it, uh, let's say I want it to animate on. So for this, I basically just need to tie in, if you look over here in the effect controls, you can see fill progress Y, fill progress X. If you go over here for fill progress X, uh, you can see that that kind of goes, you know, like wipes it on. So, and that goes from zero to 100. So I can just tie that to the animation of my route. So to do that, I'm gonna grab this comp. Since they're in two separate comps, I need to put them side by side here so I can kind of pick whip it. So here's the route animation. It's going from zero to 100. And down here, I have this chart. So I'm gonna go and open up this fill progress X percentile, and I'm gonna grab the pick whip, attach that to there, and now I should have a pretty snazzy little animation right here. So let's take a look. All right, now you can see on the bottom corner. Oh, one thing I forgot to do is uh, change the size of the borders here. And I think the reason that that might all be parented together, okay, yeah, that was my problem. So let me see here. I need to grab this one instead and scale this one down. There we go. Ah, uh, yeah, this one's parented to that one. And now one other thing I did uh, is I had a little jogger in here. So I have this extension called Wander. It's really an awesome, awesome extension from uh, Mount MoGraph from the creators of Motion. And I have this little um, animation here. I'm gonna double click this and add it here. So now I've got this little jogger GIF. And this just is going to loop here. You can see here that it creates this. It has two keyframes and that it's time remapped to just loop. Um, so let's bring this down here, put it next to my diagram. And I'm gonna change that blue color. So for the blue color, I'll just add a change to color effect and I'll grab the color of the shirt there and I'll change it to my my red. And I need to make sure it's hue, lightness, and saturation. There we go. Okay, so now I've got this little looping jogger here. I've got my elevation diagram. I've got my path. But the map is still looking a little flat. And it is still at quarter resolution. So let's let's bump up that resolution real quick. Um, and you'll see that it's still looking a little, it's just looking like it needs a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add lights to it to give the mountains more shadows. So because federal, the, the plugin Metal Freeform Pro, Pro works with uh, lights quite nicely. So I'm going to go to New, Light, and I'm going to add an ambient. And I'm going to set the intensity of the ambient to something like, let's set it to like 50. And now you can see it's being affected by the light. I might need to bump that up. And now I'm going to add a new uh, light. And now we'll add a spotlight. And I'm going to set that intensity to 100. And now you can see that it's looking a lot more dynamic right now. But I'm just going to go ahead and uh, grab this spotlight and move it off to the side so I have like some some like fall off this way. Let's see here. Something like this. Just make it a little more dramatic. That might be a little too dramatic. Now you can see how much that, you know, brings out the details here. I might just want to bring the intensity of that spot down. It's just looking a little, maybe too much. And I'm gonna grab these two things and maybe move them up here. They're not popping very well. And there you have it. I have a pretty sweet little map here. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. That really helps out my channel. If you wanna see more cool content like this, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you are made aware anytime I upload new content. And stick around because I think I'm gonna be posting some uh, Blender content soon. Putting these animations together have kind of inspired me to take a look at some 3D programs because I'm getting into this arena of um, stuff that seems, it's like it's gonna be much easier to put together inside of a 3D program like Blender or maybe even Unreal Engine. So stick around for that. You might see some tutorials coming up focusing on that kind of content. All right, I'll see you in the next one.